Global Television Network. Live from London, this is The World Today. Hello, I'm Jamie Owen. Welcome to the program. Our top stories. China rolls out the red carpet for leaders from Central Asia ahead of a high-profile summit to boost economic ties. Our other headlines, Ukraine denies... Central Asian countries ahead of a summit aimed at boosting economic ties and regional stability. The gathering, chaired by President Xi Jinping, invites the heads of state from Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan to one of China's most ancient cities, Xi'an, in Shanxi province. It will be the first in-person meeting since the COVID pandemic and comes just days before the G7 summit in Japan. Well, President Xi has held talks with his Kazakh counterpart, Kasim Joma Tokyev, ahead of Thursday's summit. The leaders discussed the... Pre developments so we should acknowledge the role of China and we need to build very good relationship uh, with your country. Well, CGTN correspondent Dong Shui reports now from Xi'an on the China Central Asia Summit. This will be the first time for the leaders of five Central Asian countries and China to meet in person for this inaugural summit since the establishment of diplomatic relations 31 years ago. And ahead of the summit, Chinese President Xi Jinping will hold bilateral meetings with them separately. Well, There will also be a grand welcoming dinner um, at the Tang Paradise and landmark in Xi'an. The architecture itself tries to uh, try to tell us the history and culture of ancient Tang Dynasty, which which was located in the city of Xi'an. And you know, the city was also the starting point of the ancient Silk Road, a network of Jura Asian trade routes dates back to the Han Dynasty some 2,200 years ago. A perfect venue for for China and Central Asians to get together. Meanwhile, in Washington, United States relations with China
thought that it would be. Now, we don't know whether that's because of personal reasons or political reasons. It's all rather opaque at the moment. The things are still rather being worked out. But we do know that there's been plenty of anti-China legislation working its way through and clearing the Congress of Washington, D.C., and also much more anti-China rhetoric, particularly on cable television here. It's very hard to go through any program, in fact, without somebody attacking China in some way. So yesterday, Tuesday, before the Senate Appropriations Committee, three leading members of the cabinet appeared to give testimony, a very unusual event. And in order of seniority, they were Anthony Anthony Blinken, with those words behind him by 12 months now, laid out a rather rosier picture with progress being made between D.C. and Beijing. Take a listen. I think we've uh, shown recently that um, there is more senior level uh, engagement with uh, China, most recently uh, our ambassador in, uh, in Beijing uh, and also the national security advisor, Jake Sullivan, meeting with his Chinese counterpart, uh, Wang Yi over a couple of days in Europe. I also think, Senator, that it's not only what's in our interest, but the rest of the world. Yes. parties is the issue of bashing China. They want to compete with China, but they want to best China, as Americans say. In other words, try to beat China if they possibly can. And few things unite them apart from that. And you've seen this very xenophobic approach we had to the man that runs TikTok a couple of weeks ago when he appeared before Congress. And I mention that because in the background to all of this, everybody in diplomatic circles and business circles knows that the single most important diplomatic relationship in the world is the one between Washington and Beijing, and yet all this nonsense seems to go on. Now, the issue of the debt ceiling was addressed, and it became clear that should there be a default in a week or two's time, it will affect military spending because members of the military may not be paid, diplomatic issues because some embassies may have to close, and missions economically, well, that's fairly self-explanatory, but also reputationally as well. For example, how can... John, we'll talk to you uh, later in the hour. For the moment, our correspondent, John Terrett, in New York. Ukraine has denied a claim by Russia that it destroyed a U.S.-made Patriot air defense system during its recent airstrikes on Kyiv. Washington says it believes it has suffered damage but not been destroyed. 18 Russian missiles were fired at the Ukrainian capital overnight on Monday. Well, let's talk to our correspondent, Stuart Smith, in Moscow. Um, Stuart... Russia denies is true is that the Patriot missile system 
is still it's still possible that it could be operational because the Russian Ministry of Defense says that all designated objects were hit and neutralized by the Russian armed forces when there was that airstrike on Tuesday. So those two bits of information Russia saying are not true. It says that this Patriot missile system, of which only two publicly exist in Ukraine, is now out of order. And also that Russia did not fire as many Kinjal missiles as Ukraine alleges. Now, why this is so important, because it's by no means the first time Ukraine and Russia have disagreed. warheads in the future. Stuart, thank you for that. Our correspondent Stuart Smith in Moscow. Well, the UK is ready to help any countries that wish to supply fighter jets to Ukraine. Those are the words of the Defence Minister Ben Wallace in Germany for talks. Britain is sending long-range missiles to Kyiv, but not planes, something that President Zelensky has been requesting. Let's talk to our correspondent, Peter Oliver, in Berlin. Um, Peter, there's a lot of talk about uh, getting uh, Ukraine fighter jets. Uh, realistically, will Germany and uh, the UK really be a part of that? that it could getting weaponry to Ukraine. It just simply can't help with this particular type of weaponry. From the UK side, well, the REF also doesn't have the F-16 in its arsenal. Um, they have said that they can help within, within reason when it comes to training, um, but they will also try and procure as many of these uh, aircraft, as these weapon systems as possible from allies that do have the F-16 in order to give them to Kiev. But in terms of giving fighter jets that Britain does have to Ukraine, that's simply not going to happen at the moment. Well, first of all, Britain is... Of course, the United States will be looking to see how many of those can be provided to Kiev, if any, come from those nations. Peter, why is the F-16 uh, jet the focus of so much of these deliberations, especially since uh, most of Ukraine's European uh, allies and neighbours don't seem to have any? Yeah, it's um, particularly those that have been forthcoming when it comes to giving military hardware, like Germany and like the United Kingdom. Um, this has been, or the, the, the programme that has been worked on, has been the, basically the, the brainchild of British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and the Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte to try and get these F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine. It is the F-16 that Ukraine has its heart set on, it does seem. They've been requesting them from the United States and Joe Biden Biden said earlier this year that uh, Ukraine didn't need these particular fighter jets, that they would require such extensive training for their pilots that it wouldn't be useful to provide them in any way, that they would have to go through so much.
Prime Minister is part of this, this grouping trying to get these aircraft to Ukraine. Um, we heard from the Dutch Foreign Minister, uh, Wopke Hoekstra, saying that there was no steps forward so far on this yet. But it does seem like that is the, the fighter jet of choice for Ukraine. It does seem that's the way that they're going to be looking forward to it. There are 800 of these fighter jets in the US Air Force's arsenal. However, as it stands at the moment, none of those will be coming from the US to Ukraine. That's at the moment anyway. Peter, thank you for that. Our correspondent, Peter Oliver, in Berlin. The former French president, Nicolas Sarkozy, has lost his appeal against a prison sentence for corruption, but the Paris Appeals Court ruled he could serve his time at home wearing an electronic tag instead of jail. Sarkozy was sentenced to three years in prison in 2021, two of those suspended for trying to influence a judge in a separate case. His legal team will now challenge this ruling at the country's highest court. A deadly fire at a hostel in New Zealand's capital is being treated as arson and police have opened a murder investigation. At least six people were killed when flames engulfed the top floor of the 92-room hostel building on Tuesday. 52 people were arrested. Where are the cash cows? And who are the lame ducks? And what exactly are black swans? Grey rhinos? And unicorn companies? Make sense of it all with global business, only on CGTS. There's a new agenda for a new world accelerating change in almost every part of our lives. It's shifting the norms of how we work. Welcome back. A reminder of our top stories. Leaders from Central Asia start to arrive in China ahead of a high-profile summit to boost economic ties. Our other headlines, Ukraine denies claims that Russia has destroyed a U.S. about all this 
Well, Jamie, the president of the Emilia-Romagna region has told citizens that they should not go near any river whatsoever, and he said if they happen to, to live next to a river, for example, that they, that they should retreat to higher floors in their house because of the amount of danger of, of, of flash flooding. Now, uh, some parts of this region have had just such an extraordinary amount of water in, in such a short amount of time, some parts having uh, roughly half of their average annual rainfall in just the space of 36 hours. pets away from the rising waters. Local authorities also found dead bodies in Forli and two other towns. There's a cruel irony about flooding taking place here. This part of Italy has been suffering from drought in recent months after a winter with little rain and a hot summer last year. But now rescue workers are having to push through chest-high water, using dinghies to travel down streets usually filled with cars. Meanwhile, an F1 race that was set to take place this weekend at the region's Imola racetrack has been cooled off. The organisers say... Yeah, Giorgio Maloney, the Italian Prime Minister, has been in Iceland this week attending the Council of Europe summit, and she is now travelling over to Japan for the G7 summit that's taking place in Hiroshima. Her office did put out a video of her taking part in a video conference with local and, and national officials who are responding uh, to this crisis. That was when she was on a, a scheduled stopover in Anchorage in Alaska on her way to Japan. Uh, and in that meeting and in a statement that the Prime Minister put out, she has said that more emergency measures can be put out uh, if necessary. pressure on the economy. 39 people are missing after a Chinese fishing boat capsized in the Indian Ocean. President Xi Jinping has ordered all efforts to be focused on the search for survivors. Those on board were crew from China, Indonesia and the Philippines. The three countries are coordinating their rescue response along with Australia, Sri Lanka and the Maldives. China has launched a new satellite as part of its Beidou navigation system. Officials say it will help make the service more accurate and stable. It's the system's first upgrade since 2020 when it began operating. Correspondent Mark New reports. The AI writing ability of ChatGPT has shaken up the world of education, so much that Santa Clara University faculty member Brian Green now gives his students less written work and more conversational exams. He points out that even the AI detection tool of the creator of ChatGPT, OpenAI, has a false positive rate of 9%. That means 9% of the time it incorrectly classifies human writing as AI-generated. 
the text generating models are going to be in a kind of a race with that, in a competitive race to see who can outwit the detector. Help may be on the way. Eric Wong, the vice president of AI at Turnitin. Thing is the signal is also pretty invisible to humans. Turnitin's AI writing detection tool works by giving teachers an estimate of the overall percentage of the document that was written by AI tools and then highlights the sections in question. Turnitin commissioned a survey of parents and guardians of high school students. It found almost half of respondents were personally aware of students using ChatGPT or similar services in ways educators would consider inappropriate. And nearly 80% felt that using AI writing services for schoolwork was a form of cheating. We don't think it should be a punitive tool. We're not entirely sure that using AI writing to complete an assignment is itself wrong. But it's important to have that visibility. Um, by contrast, these machines have read the entire internet uh, several times over in their training process. While they do a really fantastic simulation of how humans put ideas together, there are still some telltale signs at those longer ranges that you can kind of put together and say, well, this doesn't necessarily look like an association that a human might make. Ironically, difference is too subtle for the human eye to catch, but not for AI. Mark New, CGTN, Oakland, California. Well, concerns over technology are also uh, on the minds of UK drivers more than. at a nature reserve in China, Doban was enjoying a bath, letting all her cares float away when she uh, enjoyed this big stretch. The young panda was so chilled, she lost her balance and fell out of her bathtub. The iPanda platform provides uh, a 24-hour live broadcast from China's Conservation Research Center. The headlines again. Leaders from Central Asia start to arrive in China ahead of a high-profile summit to boost economic ties. Our other headlines. Several people killed, many still missing and thousands forced to flee as Italy is hit by devastating floods. Ukraine denies claims that Russia has destroyed a US-made Patriot missile system during airstrikes on Kyiv. That is the world today. Thank you for watching. There's more news on CGTN Europe's channel on the Telegram app.